Hey sixth graders, Mrs. Simonson here to do our fifth lesson in our unit of fractions and tonight we are working with multiplying. By the end of this lesson you'll be able to multiply fractions and mix numbers. You'll be able to learn a couple tricks of how to reduce those fractions to lowest terms even before you multiply and you'll be able to solve problems multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. So when we multiply fractions, we're following this general pattern here. A over C times B over D is the same as multiplying A times B over multiplying C times D. In layman's terms, that just means multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. And oh, as always, reduce to the lowest terms. So 2 thirds times 7 eighths, I multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. And then I reduce when possible. So I get 7 twelfths. 20 ten, or 10 twentieths times 6 eighths is 60 over 160. And the greatest common factor of those two numbers is 20. So I get 3 eighths. I want you to try to solve, not try, I want you to solve problems 1, 2, and 3 in your notebook. Remember to reduce and press play when you're ready to check your work. Just a quick note about number three. Remember, any whole number can be written as a fraction over one. So 30 is the same as 30 over one. Then you can go ahead and multiply the denominators. So up until now, I've taught you, you know, you multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then reduce. There is a trick you can use to reduce before you even multiply. Let me show you how it works. I'm gonna compare the numerator of the first uh, fraction with the denominator of the second fraction. And I'm going to think about what's the largest factor they both share. What's the largest divisibility test that they would pass? In this case, the largest would be 2. Both of them have a greatest common factor of 2. Both of them would um, pass the divisibility test for 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now I'm going to check the other uh, pairing, which is 3 and 7. The only divisibility test or the only greatest common factor they share is 1, so there's no reducing I can do there. Now I'm going to rewrite it. 1 third times 7 fourths. And you'll see that that's 7 twelfths. So I'm already in lowest terms, where if I had done it the traditional way, I would have had 14 24ths if I multiply numerator, multiply denominator, and then I'd have to divide by 2 and get 7 twelfths. So doing a little bit of that reducing up front can save some time at the end. So let's try this next one. So I have 12 and 8. I want to compare 12 and 8. I have to think about what's the largest um, Great, or greatest common factor of both of them, or what's the largest divisibility test that they would pass? Well, they would both pass the 4 test. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now I'm going to check the other pairing, 21 and 7. Both of them have a greatest common factor of 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 21 divided by 7 is 3. So I have 3 thirds times one half. Now you'll notice something about three thirds. What number could I replace three thirds with? Well, three thirds is equal to one. One times one half is equal to one half. Now I'm already in lowest terms. Now if I had done it the traditional way, I would have had 84 over 168. Those are some large numbers to have to reduce and it, you might have to reduce in a couple of steps if you don't know in the greatest common factor of those two. Doing some of that work up front can get you to the answer in a fewer amount of steps. So I want you to use that cross reduction before multiplying. I want you to compare those partners. So 14 and 7 and then compare 5 and 25. Do some of that legwork up front and then solve problems 4, 5, and 6, and press play when you're ready to check your work. You'll notice it's always a good idea to rewrite the problem as I did here, so that you can see when and where if you made any mistakes, and it just cleans it up knowing which numbers you're going to use. 
Okay, so when you want to multiply mixed numbers, you first want to change both into improper fractions. So if I change 6 and 3 eighths into an improper fraction, I get 51 eighths, because 8 times 6 plus 3, and 1 and 2 thirds is 5 thirds. Now I can go ahead and check if there's any cross-reducing I can do. Well, 5 plus 1 is 6, and the divisibility test for 3 is if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3, then the number is. So I can change both of these, because 3 divided by 3 is 1, 51 divided by 3 is 17. And then I can go ahead and multiply. 17 times 5 is 85, T um, over 8 times 1 is 8. And you can get 10 groups of 8 with 5 out of the 8 left over. So 6 and 3 eighths times 1 and 2 thirds is 10 and 5 eighths. I want you to do these three problems in your notebook. Remember to change them to improper fractions first. Check for any cross-reducing you can do. And then going ahead and multiplying. Press play when you're ready to check your work. So now that you know how to multiply mixed numbers and fractions, it's another thing to know how to apply it. And so we have the problem, a recipe needs one-fourth tablespoon of salt. How much salt does eight such recipes need? So we're trying to find eight sets of one-fourth. So one-fourth times eight. And again, we can use that cross-reducing trick. One times one over one times two over one equals two over one which is two, so it would be two tablespoons. I want you to solve problem number 10 in your notebook. Press play when you're ready to check your work. So tonight you worked with multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. You learned a trick about doing some reducing before you do the multiplication to get it to be in lowest terms, and you applied those uh, foundational skills into solving some problems. Review any part of this lesson before you take your quiz at Schoology, and we'll see you next time.